On this James the Bike Guy, we're taking a look at the Diamondback ATROS 3. This is a entry level full suspension mountain bike from Diamondback and it's supposed to offer some pretty good trail performance at a very low price. So we're going to go into some of the features and designs of this Diamondback ATROS 3, talk about its frame, talk about its parts, and then of course we'll find out exactly what it weighs. So if this kind of thing interests you, be sure you hit that subscribe button. That way you can see more videos like this into the future. So talking about this bike, let's talk a bit about the category. So this is a pretty inexpensive full suspension. So we shouldn't get that misconstrued. This is still gonna be more expensive than an entry level hardtail, but what it's giving you is full suspension benefits of having a little more traction in the rear because the tire stays to the ground. It allows you to expand your riding a bit while still keeping the price very low for a full suspension. So in this bike, how they're gonna do that is this ATROS frame is set up with 130 millimeters of travel up front, but it only runs 100 millimeters of travel in the rear. And so that four inches of suspension travel in the rear is done through a traditional high pivot, single pivot rear suspension. And what that means is it's gonna have a single pivot here that the whole rear swing arm rotates on. And basically by having that pivot above and in front of your bottom bracket, that means that this is gonna have some pretty decent climbing capability for an inexpensive full suspension. Basically with that pivot up and in front of the bottom bracket, it's gonna have good anti-squat properties, meaning when you pedal, it's gonna try to lengthen or elongate the suspension here, so it should pedal pretty well. The downside is, though, that means you're gonna have additional pedal feedback because the chain and the rear wheel are pretty integral into how that suspension is working, but it also has a bit of anti-rise where when you start to use the brake, a high pivot, single pivot suspension is gonna sort of lock out the rear end when you're descending. So it's a bit of a trade-off, but it gives you that full suspension design while still keeping it inexpensive because this style is pretty easy to manufacture. Going through the frame, you are getting a nice tapered head tube. So this is gonna be an inch and an eighth to an inch and a half head tube. Goes to that 130 millimeter fork that we talked about. The frame will be made out of a 60-61 T6 aluminum. And as far as geometry is concerned, it's gonna have a head angle of 66 and a half and a seat tube angle of 72.5 while having a chainstay length on the bike of 435 millimeters. And those geometry numbers are pretty good and should make this a real pleasure out on the trail. That 66 and a half degree head tube angle with the 27.5 wheels should make it descend pretty well. 72 and a half degree seat tube is still steep enough that you should be able to climb. And a 435 millimeter chainstay is not exactly short, but it's short enough to be able to be playful. So checking out the suspension on the bike, we've got this RockShock Recon fork. The RockShock Recon fork is gonna be 130 millimeters of suspension. It's got 32 millimeter stanchions, so it should be reasonably stiff and you're gonna have a lockout as well as compression adjustment. You will have rebound adjustment down on the bottom. And the best thing is this is an air adjustable, meaning you can get it set up exactly to your weight and riding style. In the back, the suspension carries with this RockShock Monarch R. This is an air shock, so you can also set it up to your weight just like the front. It's gonna have rebound adjustment, so you can dial in how fast or how slow it comes back but it's not gonna have compression adjustment. For a drivetrain on the bike, we've got the SRAM NX drivetrain. This is a 11 speed setup. So instead of the Eagle that you might see on some others, this is gonna be the 11 speed setup, which means it's gonna be running an 11 to 42 tooth cassette on the back, also a SRAM PG1130. And it goes up front to what I think is a pretty nice spec on this bike, which is this race face crank set. So this is the Affect cinch crank set, meaning it's a direct mount chain ring. This is a narrow wide setup and it comes 30 tooth, but you're able to, with just a tool, take that on and off and adjust the chain ring size with whatever else you'd like to put on there. Now, another neat thing while we're down here is it is a threaded bottom bracket and it does have ISCG mounts. So that means you can get a chain guide, 
bash guard, any of that kind of stuff mounted up just behind the chain ring on these ISCG mounts. Speaking of mounts, we should talk about the axle standards. So this bike is gonna be set up with 12 by 142 millimeter spacing in the back. So that's gonna be traditional through axle spacing. And then the RockShox Recon has 15 by 100 millimeter non-boost through axle as well up front. Now for wheels, this is running DDM5 rims. These are a double walled rim. They're 20 millimeters wide internal. They've got 32 spokes to them. And it's gonna be set up with formula hubs, both in the front as well as the rear. Moving on to the cockpit, this is running some more race face here. This has a race face Chester 35 stem and handlebar. It's 35 millimeter clamp, which is nice and modern. It's also going to be super wide with 780 millimeters of width. Of course, that can be cut down as you want. And nicely, it's got some pretty good looking lock on grips. They remind me a bit of what you'd get on a BMX bike. They've got the nice flange up here so you've got a place to get your hand up to and that's going to operate the 11 speed SRAM NX shifter and then go to the Shimano MT200 brakes. So the MT200 brake is a hydraulic disc brake. It's going to run a two piston caliper both in the front and the rear. It's mineral oil and here you're going to have some Shimano rotors that are six bolt set up as well. And to sit on you're going to have the Diamondback sinker saddle mounted up on a Diamondback Micro Adjust 30.9 seat post. And then it also comes with some aluminum Diamondback platform pedals that are gonna have adjustable pins on them. So that's an overall look of the part specs on this Diamondback Artraz 3. Let's go ahead and find out exactly what this bike weighs. And the actual weight of the Diamondback Artraz 3 comes in at 32.85 pounds. Thanks for watching this video on the Diamondback ATROS 3. Go ahead and let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. While you're at it, be sure to hit that like button. Helps me know that you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That way we can see another bike in the next video.